I know you had so many other options, so I love you for that. All right. That was for you. You see all that? That was for you. Anyway, today's video is going to be something that I think is really useful because I am going to be explaining the first season of Grey's Anatomy so you don't have to watch. I've been thinking about doing this video for a long time because a lot of people have seen Grey's Anatomy, but I still think even more people have not seen it. So, and it's so old. Maybe you don't want to start from season one because there are so many seasons. And for me personally, I started watching Grey's Anatomy in 2024. I have never seen an episode before this year. I hear everyone talking about it, of course, but I've just never seen one. So I decided to watch each season and then do a synopsis in ASMR video form. A lot of people love the show. Um, I have a little, and this video is also going to have gum chewing as well because I already had this piece of gum in my mouth before I decided to film today, so that's why. But season one was really interesting I haven't seen the second season or the third season yet, so I'm just going to go over a little bit of facts. I'm going to explain the characters. I'm going to explain some plot lines um, just that way, and there will be spoilers. There's spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. So if you haven't seen it yet and you do plan on watching it, I would click out of this video. If you haven't seen it yet and you just want me to tell you, I'm about to tell you, um, I'm that type of person, too, where someone will be like, oh my gosh, well, have you seen this movie? And I'm like, no, what happened? And they're like, oh, I, I, I want to save it. I don't, I don't want it to, I don't want to spoil anything. I'm like, please spoil it because there's so many movies in existence and I can't get through every single one. So I'm going to tell you, and I've got some cup chewing. Today's drink is a water, a purified Brita filter pristine water in my Nutribullet cup. I don't have any crystal light or any pure stir, sorry, the brand of stir in here today because I've just been drinking a lot of chemicals lately, you know. All right, so season one of Grey's Anatomy released March 27th, 2005, so I would have been in Mar March 27th, 2005, I think I would have been in like third or fourth grade, it's a long time ago, so uh, I'm, 20, I'm 27 now, so that's like over 15 years ago, so just some trivia, right, this, the season served as a mid-season replacement for Boston Legal, now, Boston Legal was eventually canceled and Grey's Anatomy is still going. So I think that was a good, uh, good idea. Uh, now, I also love Boston Legal. I could easily, I could easily do a Boston Legal video because Boston Legal is so funny. Like, I've worked in the legal field and I, I was not, I wasn't even like, I wasn't an attorney at all. I've never been an attorney. I'll, I'll probably never be an attorney. But it's just funny to see the storylines in Boston Legal and William Shatner was just at his best. So, if anybody wants a, Bo a Boston Legal breakdown, let me know. They, they have it on Hulu, so I'd have to rewatch it, but I used to love that show when it was on. All the voiceovers for the season are narrated by Meredith Grey, making it the only season in which she narrates them all until it happened again in season 18 and season 20. The first season not to premiere in September due to it being a mid-season replacement. A common mistake in the first season is that the attending surgeons often do procedures that are not part of their field of specialty, such as general surgeons operating on lungs. Okay. Uh, season 1 wrapped on March 28, 2005, the day after the series premiered on television. That's really crazy. So they got the last episode done and then they released it. All main characters appear in every episode 
except for Richard Weber, who was absent for three episodes. Okay. So. I'm going to pop a picture of the characters in. I want to pop it over here, over here. I think I'll pop it on this side. So, Ellen Pompeo is the main character. She's Dr. Meredith Gray. Uh, Sandra O oh is Dr. Christina Yang. Catherine Heigl is Dr. Izzy Stevens. Justin Chambers is Dr. Alex Karev. T.R. Knight is Dr. George O'Malley. Chandra Wilson is Dr. Miranda Bailey. James Pickens Jr. is Dr. Richard Weber. Isaiah Washington is Dr. Preston Burke. And Patrick Dempsey is Dr. Derek Shepard, otherwise known as McDreamy or McSteamy. Wait, is one McDreamy and one McSteamy, or are they interchangeable? And then an important, re, uh, an important recurring guest star is Kate Walsh, who is Dr. Addison Montgomery Shepard. So, the season opens with Dr. Meredith Gray. She, her mother has Alzheimer's disease, but her mother is also a doctor inside of this hospital that they all work at. And I'm horrible right now, but I forgot the name of the hospital one second. Okay, the hospital's called Seattle Grace Hospital, so it's interesting they based it in Seattle. That's, that's pretty cool. So, her mother was a very renowned doctor at Seattle Grace. Oh my god. Um, her mother, who is named Ellis, was a very renowned and important figure inside of the hospital that they all work at, Seattle Grace Hospital. Her mother has Alzheimer's, so it's like advanced too. Like the mom in the show looked pretty young, like she looked like she was in her 50s, but um, she has like an advanced version of Alzheimer's and she is in a retirement home not far from Se Seattle Grace. So, Meredith is her daughter, and Meredith is a intern. She quickly becomes good friends with Sandra O's character named... I, I, I am so bad with names, so I'm looking off a little cheat sheet here, so I don't get anything wrong. She becomes quick friends with Christina Yang, um, which is Sandra O's character was also really good in Killing Eve. If you've never seen that show, she's in that show. Um, now, Meredith is kind of like a sweet type of nice character, but she's really fair and she really cares about her patients and she really wants to learn. Sandra O's character, Christina, is kind of like a hard ass. Like, she's like the brilliant one, the tough one, the one that doesn't take any shit from anyone. And if I were to, if I were to like look through these lists of characters, I think, I think Sandra O's character, Christina, is my favorite. Yeah, I think, I think she's my favorite. So, the black doctors in this show are really accomplished. Preston Burke, who, who's Isaiah Washington. And Richard Weber, um, he's the older black dude. His real name is James Pickens Jr. Um, they're the ones that are kind of leading the interns and helping them find their way. So, in real life, I believe the Isaiah Burke, Dr. Burke, and Dr. Weber would be like the attending, like they'd be the attending physician, 
and then the interns are called like the resident physicians um but i've never seen it just called an intern i've never seen that um so let's go through the plot lines in order of this the episodes so the first plot line is meredith's mother being sick um sometimes meredith's mother alice will be sentient and sometimes she just won't remember anything or won't say anything at all so meredith checks on her pretty often like she'll just get off of work go hang out with go hang out with her mom she'll like before she gets on her shift she'll go to the retirement home and the thing about ellis is even though she has alzheimer's she's really stubborn so she'll be like no i don't want to do that or no i don't like this and the staff are trying to work with her and so is meredith um and it's just a really complicated relationship because meredith's father has already passed away so she's the only person she has left um i don't want this video to be uh 48 days long so let's move on to the second plot point so then Meredith meets Dr. Shepard, and Dr. Shepard is Patrick Dempsey, who is really, really handsome. I mean, most most actors have to look good. That's just the name of the game. But he's like, in real life, he would be one of the hottest doctors probably in America. And he moved from the East Coast to the West Coast, as you'll find out, because they had they they do this weird plot line towards the end of the season where i don't know i don't know i'll just i'll, I'll get to that later so meredith and dr mcsteamy they start to build an attraction for one another and this attraction is really strong they are having sex inside the hospital, which I feel like in real life could really get you fired, but they're doing it in the hospital, they're doing it at her house, they're doing it everywhere. They're like teenagers. Um, and she is his uh, subordinate, so I don't really know in real life how that would work, but in TV land, in Shonda land, it's accepted and encouraged and they are not the only co-workers that are having sex so george moving on to the next plot line who is tr knight um, is also infatuated with meredith he is more, he, he's basically the opposite of Mick Steamy, Dr. Shepard. He's like, he's like a nerdy kind of dorky character. And of course, Meredith's not going for that because he's not her type, you know. But he is also good friends with Katherine Heigl's character, Dr. Izzy. And they end up living together and, uh, being intimate as well so another plot line is about dr izzy and i want to talk about katherine heigl a little bit because she was known for her tenure on Grey's anatomy to be very very complicated as an actress and very hard to work with so she was ousted from the show pretty early because she is known in Hollywood for not being very nice and she's known in Hollywood for not being very kind and it must be really really bad like her her attitude must have been horrible because there are probably people who are just as diva-ish as Katherine Heigl that still can get jobs so I don't even want to know what type of attitude she had for real now Dr. Izzy Heigl character is very scrappy so she didn't grow up the way that Meredith grew up well Meredith grew up with you could say she had a silver spoon in her mouth because her mother was a doctor 
Izzy was basically a stripper um, and a, uh, I don't even know, a scantily clad model. And she worked her way through medical school by taking sexy pictures and, you know, maybe doing things that she, that the average woman would, wouldn't have the courage to do. So she faced a lot of criticism from patients and from her colleagues because one of her patients was like, one of her, I remember one episode, her, she came in to take care of a patient and he was like, oh, he said something like, oh my God, sorry, my like, I is just feeling weird. I'm a sickly person, just kidding. Um, she was criticized by one of her patients because uh, he was like, what did he say? He said something, what did he say? If you've seen the show, you know what he said. Basically, he was being a pig because I think she used to like dance for him or lap dance for him. And he was like, oh, like sit on my lap how you used to or something. And then one of her colleagues overheard that. So um, she has worked her way up. She is someone that is kind of like, she's kind of like Dr. Um, Yang in a way, where she's really a strong personality and she doesn't take any crap from anyone. And I like, I like Dr. Izzy as well. Like my, my favorite character list, Dr. Izzy would be second, but Again, I've only seen the first season. I haven't seen the second season. So, um, I will do another Grey's Anatomy video about the second season. And then I will add to my thoughts from this video. Because I like ev everyone so far in the series. I like. I don't hate anybody yet. Okay. Moving on. Hold on a second. Wait, what? Okay. So, that's a plot line. If you've ever seen the show, you know that Katherine Heigl is a beautiful woman. Like, she looks like she's about 5'10". She has model-esque features, so it makes sense that they would write her being a model into the storyline. Okay, so one of my favorite storylines from season one is the storyline between Dr. Yang and Dr. Burke. So, Dr. Yang builds a relationship with Dr. Burke. Dr. Burke is a black man. He is uh, played by Isaiah Washington, who also was very difficult. And he uh, said something homophobic in, uh, he said something homophobic and they got rid of him because T.R. Knight is uh, homosexual in person, or not in person, in real life. So he said something controversial and they kicked him off the show. So that's two people off the show gone. For season for season one, because I know more I know more characters have been kicked off. Um Yeah, Dr. Yang and Dr. Burke build a relationship. At first they're both playing coy. Like they're they're playing hard to get. They're like, Oh, I don't want to be with you. Um, it's just sex, it's nothing serious. But eventually, um Dr. Burke starts to catch feelings. He starts to become connected to Dr. Yang, but Dr. Yang still can't admit it. So much so that Dr. Yang eventually becomes pregnant with Dr. Burke's child. And I am so horrible because I cannot remember what happened with the pregnancy. I can't remember if she carried it to full term because I, it's September now, like it's September, 2024. I will finish season one I finished season one the first week of August, so I have not seen it. Wait, no, I finished season one the last week of July, so I haven't seen it in about a month and some change. So I cannot remember what happened to the baby. 
I can't remember, but um, Dr. Burke was basically falling in love. And um, Dr. Burke was basically falling in love. And and yeah. Okay, so they're falling in love. I don't know what happened to the baby. I feel like she I feel like she gave it up for adoption. I don't know. I don't know. I need to rewatch the last few episodes. Okay. Dr. Burke is so hot to me. Like, I think he's cuter than Dr. Shepard. Okay. So, then we move on to the power struggle between Dr. Burke and Dr. Weber. Now, Dr. Weber is like the man. Like, he is in charge of the hospital. He is calling the shots. He is kicking ass and taking names, and everybody listens to him. He is the first barrier of entry to your career at Seattle Grace Hospital. Dr. Burke is also very talented. He's a talented surgeon. But he doesn't really have the people skills the way that Dr. Weber has. And I do feel like that's holding him back in his career. Um... So, yes. And out of Dr. Burke and Dr. Weber, oh, something else, something else they bring up in this season is Ellis, who is Meredith's mother, had an affair with Dr. Weber, the black man. And I, I don't know if it was just me. If you've seen the show, let me know in the comments what you thought about that. But to me, that was a bigger bombshell in the season than Dr. Yang being pregnant by Dr. Burke. I was just like, what? What's going on? So, a nurse that is worked in the hospital for like 30 years in one of the episodes she comes back to the hospital because she's basically dying and she was like um she asked Meredith how her mother's doing and Meredith lies Meredith doesn't want people to know that Ellis has advanced Alzheimer's because Ellis would have never admitted something like that she was a really strong headstrong um reserved person she didn't let her staff or anyone she worked with know anything that was happening in her personal life. And Meredith understands that Ellis would never share anything like that with a nurse or anybody in the hospital. So to the nurse that's eventually in the hospital, like slowly passing away, uh, Meredith is like, oh, she's good. She's, she's hanging out and she's finally getting some time to relax and stuff like that. And the nurse goes, I worked with your mother for X amount of years. What is really going on with her? Because she would never relax in her free time. She was always in the hospital in her free time. So what's really going on? And Meredith doubles down. She's like, um, no, she's really fine. She's really fine. She's good. She is just, um, she just doesn't really want to talk to people right now. She doesn't want to stop by the hospital. She's got stuff going on. So, in the latter, in the episode after that episode, the nurse is still in the hospital, and in the then she, Meredith is there in the middle of the night, and she says to the nurse, "I've been lying to you. Um, I know you knew my mother really well. She is. She has rapid." Alzheimer's like she's sick and the nurse is like oh okay you know and then she has some like 
esoteric philosophical monologue that I completely forgot but she was basically like you know what don't be like your mom well the message she didn't say that the message of the episode was you know we don't have to be like our parents if our parents if you can't get a, a, a real answer out of your mom and you know if your parents were reserved and you couldn't share your life with them don't be like that if you are the type of person that likes to communicate because it makes you happy and it makes you feel connected, then that's what you need to do to make yourself happy and to feel connected. And I really like that episode. I think I'm going to rewatch that one pretty soon. Um, Doctor, moving on to the next plot line. Dr. Weber finds out who was having the affair with Ellis Meredith's mother finds out that he has a brain tumor and he's going to need to take some time to relax now he is a patient in the hospital but while he's a patient in the hospital he's kind of still like dictating just from the hospital bed and dr shepherd um patrick dempsey patrick dempsey's character he's like hey dr weber you know, you could be incapacitating long term. There was a, a storyline of Dr. Weber eventually losing his eyesight, which, because the tumor was pressing on his brain, so it was like making his vision go in and out. So uh, sometimes when there's storylines like that in movie or sh in movies and shows, I feel like the actor was really difficult to work with, and they're prepping the audience to kill that person off so they don't have to pay that person anymore. And that's kind of what it was giving. It was giving like they gave him the brain tumor because they didn't know if they wanted to keep him on the show or not. But yeah. Dr. Shepard is like, listen, like you're getting older. You can't keep doing this. Give me the keys to the city. You know, like I'll kiss the ring if I can have what you have and dr weber it's like he's kind of in denial about how serious the situation is and i don't remember what happened with dr weber either i don't know if he died at the end of the season or what but i need to watch season two of Grey's anatomy so i can see what happened but he was in denial about his condition and he was like no i'm still going to be here so you don't need to be having conversations with me about the future of Seattle Grace. All right. So I think the second twist outside of the affair between Ellis and Dr. Weber was the main twist of the season where Dr. Shepard um, which is Dr. Meredith Gray's love interest has been married the whole time, which made me be like, what the fuck, you know? Like, that was a real twist. Like, I was sitting at home and I was like, OMG, 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 you know? So, he's been married the whole time. And I didn't know that. Like, it wasn't giving... I have a wife. It was giving I'm single and falling in love with another single person. So when his wife just popped in, I was like, did they just write this in randomly to fill time? Because why did they do that? So his wife's name is Dr. Addison Montgomery Shepard. So they do share a last name and she is a nurse or sorry doctor she's a doctor as well duh in the east coast i can't remember if it was her if she was in new york city or what but um turns out they are still married but she's the one that cheated so she cheated on him and this is when it went into unbelievable territory for me because if you have a husband who looks like that and has that type of job why would you be sleeping with other people like in real life 
if your husband looks like that and is a surgeon, he's sleeping with other people, you know. But the way that they set it up on the show is she cheated on him with his best friend. And he moved away because of that, because he was so hurt about it. But Dr. Addison Montgomery Shepard comes back to Seattle and follows him because she's trying to win him back. And I do believe that, I do believe they ended up having sex around the same time that him and Meredith started having sex. So I think he was sleeping with both of them, but I can't remember. I don't know. I can't remember. But, um, yeah. Who was a nurse, Vivian? Anyway, so that's, that's season one. And I don't know how good of a job I did making it seem interesting, but it really was interesting. Like, it's a really good show. I see why so many people were talking about it for so many years, because um, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool concept, and I do feel like Grey's Anatomy is, well, there was a show called ER that came on before Grey's Anatomy on ABC, or NBC, but I do think that Grey's Anatomy is like the second best hospital show on basic cable. So, um, and the, uh, the costume design for the show must have been really easy because they're all wearing scrubs. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I've never seen season 20, but I do wonder how many of the characters are still on Grey's Anatomy now compared to 2005. Um, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. So that's the that's the wrap up and synopsis of season one. Of course, it's called Grey's Anatomy, so there's a lot of medical terms, and uh, I don't know how accurate it is. I would love to watch the show with someone who actually is a surgeon. But they're probably going to be like, none of this is real, and none of these medications make sense for these health conditions, but it sounded good. Like, it's it sounded real to me, but of course, I'm a novice. I don't even know, so um, check it out if you can. You know, it's a pretty good show. I like it. I'm excited to watch season two. I think that's going to be my little show that I have on while I'm uh, on my treadmill, this treadmill here. I like to I like to watch shows while I work out because it makes me stay on the treadmill longer. A lot of interesting cases and the, the writing of the show is very... The writing of the show is very... I don't know, what's a, what's a synonym for like makes you think about life and relationships and because a lot of people joke that Grey's Anatomy is just people having sex on hospital beds and stuff. And there's, there is a lot of pe different people sleeping with each other on the show. But um, it, it's really cool. It's really, really cool. And I didn't think I would like it, but I like it a lot. I like it a lot. I think it's a great show. So, with all that being said, um, what other show should I review? I'm thinking of a Shogun, because Shogun won all those Emmys. I still haven't seen it. I, I think I said in one of my other videos I was on episode one. I'm still on episode one. So, there's a lot of different shows to do. There's a, a new show comes out every single day. It's, it's getting crazy. Like, I can't keep up with all the media. 